I want to gain some credibility with my young budding kid cook. Being here makes him realize that, guess what? Mom's got some skills. <laughs> Partak from Auburn, California. I've been blissfully married for 13 years and I have an 11 year old son named Mason. He is a kid cook. Check this out, a whole roasted chicken. He has a YouTube channel, he has a Facebook page, he does live cooking demos and TV performances and that's really cool but he's growing up as all of our kids are in a supersized world. Everything is big. A small soda is 32 ounces today. That's not small. I want Mason to understand a normal portion and be satisfied so he doesn't have to struggle with his weight as he grows up. There's no other way to say this. I come from a fat family. I love them, but they're a big family. <laughs> I looked around and thought, I don't wanna be like this. I do struggle with my weight, and I do struggle with creating recipes and making food that meets a certain nutritional criteria. I wanna make food that tastes like one thing when it first goes in your mouth, and then as you chew it, tastes like something else, and then when you're done, you're like, wow, what was that? I'm excited to get into the kitchen with Chef Pomeroy. She strikes me as a rebel, somebody who takes life by the horns, just full of life. I can't wait. and I'm the chef and owner of Beast in Portland, Oregon. In 2014, I won Best Chef Northwest from the James Beard Foundation. My cooking is a little bit French influenced. We do a fixed menu here, six courses. One of the things that really drives my passion as a chef is about caring for people. Everyone comes in and eats communally. They eat the same thing at the same time. And our menu changes 100% every week. So I'm inspired by what I'm seeing locally and seasonally, and I'm able to show that to people in a way that I think really impacts them. They can feel when spring's arrived or when fall is cresting. To me, cooking healthfully really means cooking local ingredients at the peak of season and not doing too much to manipulate them, really just letting the ingredients shine. You know, Kathy has an 11-year-old son and he's into food. My daughter's 14, she's not necessarily as into cooking, but of course she's really into eating. So I'm experienced with pleasing the palate of a young person who's an adventurous eater, but also growing up in today's supersized society. I'm hoping to show Kathy just how she can really create something that's flavorful and intense, but balanced and somewhat nuanced for her family so that everyone in the family can really appreciate what she makes. I'm Naomi, welcome to Beast. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited to be here. I decided to do a sesame beef farfalle with some Asian vegetables. I think your family's gonna love it. That sounds great. I went to the grocery store and I got some flat iron steak. I think it's really important to get grass-fed meat when you can. One of the things about grass-fed beef which makes it different is that cows that are grazing on grass are actually eating what they're supposed to be eating. When we feed them other products, it changes uh, their composition a little bit. We have plenty of grasslands here, so it's wonderful for us to be able to raise our, our cattle that way. And it actually makes it healthier, so there's more um, omegas and the animals just a healthier animal all around. I want to show you how to season the meat. We call this the aerial salting method. Basically, you're just moving your fingers back and forth here and getting a good amount of salt. Yeah, little that's a little too much. <laughs> and you want to go higher and just let a little higher. bit go. Yep. It's kind of like snowing. It's like, yep, okay. exactly. One of the most important things about cooking beef, if you want to get that nice medium rare cook, is keeping it dry seasoning ahead, but most importantly, it's keeping it out at room temperature for about half an hour or a little longer so that you can get a really nice even cook on the meat. One of the great things about the dish that I'm teaching Kathy today is that you could actually eliminate the beef. This particular pasta from Barilla has a lot of protein in it, and you could actually eliminate the meat altogether and still have a really balanced meal. 
Kathy, when I heard your story about your son and growing up in a supersized yeah. world, you know, I have a 14 year old daughter also, and I have the same kinds of concerns. I wanted to give something that would feel really satisfying to your family that they could eat a pretty big portion of, right. but it's so healthy because it concentrates a lot on the vegetables. So let's get those prepped. Eating something organic is great, but I think even better than eating organic is eating something that's locally grown. The less distant something's traveled, um, the greener it is. When something's traveled a long way, it means that it has to be preserved to travel that far. So it has to be coated in wax or chemicals or whatever to be able to make it on a big trip. So when you're eating something that's grown, say within a 100 or 200 mile radius of where you live, you could pretty much bet that it's gonna be a lot fresher and better product than, than something that's grown far away. So we're gonna use about a half of an onion. So how do you keep from crying when you have to chop onions? Usually I just make someone else do it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna cook this pasta. I'm gonna add Plenty of salt to this boiling water. So let's toss this in here and set a timer for nine minutes. So first you just want to let your oil get nice and hot. Garlic. And add some garlic. Just cook it until you can start to smell oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it starts to get a little bit translucent. Then I'm gonna add my ginger. I'm actually gonna mix the sesame oil and the sriracha together. To get all that goodness. A little more sriracha. Does your family like a little spicy or no? They do. I, I think it's perfect. I okay, think it's well, amazing. Okay, let's keep it perfect for yeah. you because your family's not here. That's so right. Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nobody ever says that. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but I call that sauce done and we're going to start the vegetables. Uh, I've got a wok right here and I'm going to get it real hot. I've got a couple tablespoons of oil here. Start with your onions. Really nice high heat. You know, one of my favorite things is really going to the farmer's market and being able to meet the people that grow my food. For me as a chef, that's something that really impacts how I cook. I buy a bulb of fennel from someone uh, that I've known for years. I'm gonna treat it so differently than I would just purchasing it at a grocery store. All right, so this looks good to me. I'm actually gonna shut it off. Okay. The reason is because it's gonna keep cooking and right. steaming just a little bit, so I wanna turn it off a little bit before I need it. We have our meat that we seasoned earlier. Once the pan's hot, you're gonna add a little bit of oil. One of the most important things, um, especially when cooking grass-fed beef, is you wanna get a quick sear on it because grass-fed beef is very lean. It wants to see the heat quickly and then go into the oven where it has more radiant heat all around it. If you wanna get a little bit more of a sear on it, you can just drop uh, another heavy object on the top to give it a little bit of weight, create a little bit more pressure and give it a better sear. Nice, beautiful. All right, into the oven. So now we're gonna put this whole delicious dish together. Everything looks and smells so good. A Little bit of peanut. Ooh. And I like to garnish with a wedge of lime. All right, here we go. This is exciting. All right. This is so awesome. It has the layers of flavor. The garlic and the ginger, they come through, but it's not overpowering. The vegetables are crispy. I think you did a perfect job. Awesome. I think you did a perfect job. Ah! High five. Hi, Kathy. I'm Katherine Gunya, your personal coach from Weight Watchers. It's so nice to meet you. I'm really excited to be here. Tell me a little bit about your eating habits. You know, I eat really well. And being a member of Weight Watchers, knowing that I'm going to weigh in the same time every week, I think about that. But I struggle with staying accountable. When I travel and I'm not weighing in, I tend to slip. I tend to be a little more loose and free with what I eat. I completely relate to that. A huge piece of me being able to keep off my over 40 pound weight loss with Weight Watchers is staying accountable to that weigh-in. You can still make an appointment with yourself to just hop on that scale, see if there's been a weight change, and that in itself, Kathy, may really help you with that accountability piece. I know that would help. I need to just make time for myself. Tell me a little bit about your exercise program. Well, I struggle with exercise. I've had eight knee surgeries and an ankle surgery on the same leg. A great tool from Weight Watchers is an activity monitor that would be able to help you with that tracking piece, and it will show you where you're moving and give you that accountability that you need. Awesome. Let's talk about an action plan. This week, schedule a weigh-in, so that way, even if you can't get to a meeting, you know that you're getting that weigh-in, and hook up your activity monitor. That way, you can start monitoring your activity, and then you're getting the accountability you need with that. Thank you, Catherine. I'm really excited to put these tools to use when I get home. You're so welcome. So my name is Mustakeem Siddiqui. I'm one of the cancer docs here at Mayo Clinic, and I'm also the medical director for the Better Company here at Mayo Clinic. 
The Better app is there to help you with whatever you need in your healthcare management. If you needed some appointments between two different doctors coordinated such that they're on the same day, or making sure that records are transferred between the two physicians. For example, the Better Personal Health Assistant can take into account Kathy's surgeries and craft a exercise plan that is best for her joints. But on top of that, they can actually engage with you on a daily basis to keep you motivated. Pomeroy is the firecracker that I thought she was. She is a woman on a mission to, I think, live life to the fullest and have fun, and she does it with food. Having this experience reminded me how much I do love being in the kitchen. It satisfied my need to want to layer flavors. The garlic with the ginger, with the onion, with the cabbage, all of these different things that you wouldn't normally put together just married beautifully. So I think to take this home to Mason and say, hey, look, it doesn't have to be a little tiny portion to be healthy. It was super size in flavor and nutrition. I think secretly he's gonna think, oh wow, my mom rocked it. <laughs>